Welcome to yet another video of Code Farm Stats. The question that we are going to do today is one of those typical questions that you know looks difficult but is actually very easy if you know the recursion concept and that is why it is in fact asked a lot and we are going to keep practicing more and more questions until all of you tell me that okay you are able to solve all the recursion questions now until you tell me I am going to keep solving keep practicing with you guys until you guys are like completely confident of being able to solve recursion questions then we will move to harder concepts. So let's get started with today's question. So this is the question that we are going to solve today, possible words from phone digits. So this is how our phone keypad used to look earlier, right? So we are given some digits, we are given like a vector of numbers and it is given that, okay, the numbers are going to be between two and nine, okay? And what we have to do is find the corresponding possible strings from it. Now see, two can actually mean A or B or C. Similarly, 3 can mean D or E or F. Similarly, 9 can mean W, X, Y, Z like this. So corresponding to this, we have to find all the possible answers. Okay. So in all the questions that we did till now, there were like either two possibilities like include or not include, like include, exclude, like in subsets also it was the same case. In, otherwise, we did one more question, we were either including the space or not including the space. So all the questions are similar. See here, instead of like two possibilities, there are going to be multiple possibilities. See here, the possibilities can be like three can mean D or E or F. So those are the possibilities. Similarly, nine can mean W or X or Y or Z like this. See at max, there are like four possibilities. So there are three possibilities for most of the numbers, but for the numbers seven and nine, there are four possibilities, right? I hope this much is clear. Let's quickly see from the diagram that, okay, how a recursive tree and recursive stack will look like. So this is like the typical question, which is like a small variation of the questions that we have been doing till now. So you should not feel like, you know, recursive tree is going to have only like two branches or uh, always include exclude is going to look like include exclude. Only. This is like a small variation. We are talking about possibilities at every point, right? So here also like the possibilities corresponding to two is what? A or B or C. So we are talking about the possibilities, right? Here also we are going to divide like a bigger problem into smaller sub problems. How are we going to do that? We are going to first take two, three, four. Then we will assign like, okay, corresponding to two, it can be A or B or C. So we have those possibilities. Then we will move to three, then we'll move to four like that. So this is like basic recursion only. It is actually very, very similar to the questions that we have been doing till now. So if you have done those, this should be very easy to understand, right? Let's see the diagram now. I have written down the corresponding characters for each digit. So like two can mean E, B, C, three can mean D, F. So there will be sort of a map that we will have to make ourselves, okay? Because we are given a keypad, we will obviously have to make a map, right? That, okay, what does seven mean? What does eight mean? What can it correspond to? Like that, okay? Now these are the digits that are given to us, two, three, four. What will we do? We'll start one by one. We start from two. Now we know that two can have like three possibilities. It can either mean A or it can mean B or it can mean C. Now the next two numbers have to be filled, right? We have put the values for this uh, index equal to basically zero. Now, when we come over here, now what are the three possibilities for three? Three can mean D, E, F. So here we can either put A, D or we can put A, E or we can put A, F. Now the others have to be filled. Similarly, over here also with B also, it can be D, E, F. So B, E, sorry, B, D, B, E and B, F. Right. Similarly, over here also three possibilities, C, D, C, E and C, F. Now, when we come to four, now four can again correspond to G, H, I, right? So here it will become like A, D, G, A, D, H, A, D, I. Similarly, this will corresponding to three. It will become A, E, G, A, E, H, A, E, I. Similarly, I don't have enough space, but I hope you have understood. In the diagram that we have made, we can see that, okay, each branch can is going like in three possible directions, right? Because we have taken the numbers two, three, four. Suppose there were seven or nine, they could have been like four possibilities. So in the question that we have, there can be like three possibilities or at max four possibilities. Now four possibilities will happen when the digit is like seven or nine, or there will be only three possibilities, right? So what will be the time and the space complexity? See, now for each number, so suppose there are like n digits and for each digit at max, there are like four possibilities, right? There can be three possibilities also, but in worst case, how many possibilities are there? Four. Now, so each position of these n elements can be filled in four ways. So this can be filled in four ways. This can be filled in four ways. This can be filled in four ways. So what will be the time complexity? Four power n, right? 
and all the possible strings that we are going to form is also going to be of length n right because each digit is correspond is going to correspond to each character right so the length of that is going to be n so the time complexity and the space complexity will become n into 4 pi n right because that is the amount of space that we will need to store also right what will be the auxiliary space complexity? That is what will be the temporary extra space that we will require. That is what will be the space that taken by a recursive stack. Now for that, let's see how deep is a recursive tree going or when you form a recursive stack, how will it look? Earlier you're going to push like A, A, then you're going to push like A, D for that index, then you're going to go to the third index like that, right? So whatever is the value of N, that is how deep your recursive stack or your recursive tree will go. So your auxiliary space complexity becomes order of n. And this is the time and the space complexity. Let's start writing the code now. So as you can see, I've already written a map over here. So basically corresponding to each integer, I have added like a vector of characters. So you can see it like a hash map. If any of you are new to STL, you can go watch out the STL series on my main Kirti Purswani channel. So there I've explained STL in detail and you'll be able to understand what an ordered map does. So basically when I refer to these, uh, when I will refer to like map of two, map of three, it will return me the list in order of one time complexity. So uh, I've already written the map. Let's write the recursive code now. So obviously I'm going to write a recursive function. I'm going to return nothing from it. I'm just going to call it helper. What all things do I need to do? So I will be dealing with strings, right? I will be making the strings. So there will be like a current string that I will be dealing with, right? So I'm going to call it string current. And I will also need to pass the uh, current index that I'm dealing with right now. So that will be index. Then I'm also passing the value of n. I will pass the array that is given to me and I will pass the vector of string where I have to store my result, right? So corresponding to each number at the index in this array, what do I have to do? Corresponding to each digit, I have to see all the possibilities, right? Now all the possibilities are stored in this map. So I have to go through the map. Let me just show you how. So what I will do, so for a character in the map value basically. so basically this array that i have in this there are digits right now these digits are the keys in our map so, so basically, basically the digit present in this array at index so what is the digit present at index so that is a of index that is the key of the map value now that will have that will give me this vector and now i will go through this vector using the for loop see again what am i doing the array at index is giving me some number basically i will start with two then three then four now these numbers are the keys in this map. So they return me this vector. Now I will go through this vector and I will check out every possibility. Now when I have that possibility, what I will do? I will recursively call the function. And in the current string, what will I do? I will add this character. So basically this character that I have, I will add it to the string and then I will pass for the next index value, right? Then I will pass n, I will pass a and I will pass res. See, for those of you who have any doubts, like, you know, why don't I have to delete anything from the string? That is because when I'm passing itself, I'm just doing current plus C. I am not like changing the value of current. So in the next for loop, the value of current is remaining same. Only when I'm calling the function, the value of current that is going to be passed is going to have that C concatenated. The basically new character is going to be concatenated and passed to the new function. But the current value is still same. So I don't have to do anything to reset the current value because I am not playing with the current value inside this function. Only when the next recursive call, I am adding the new character to it. So the current value is still same. That is why I don't need to like reset the current. So this is how my recursive code looks. I obviously just have to add like a base condition to avoid stack overflow. What will be our base condition over here? So when our index value will basically reach n, I don't have to do anything. What do I have to do? I have to store the current value to my res, right? So how will I do that? So when index becomes equal to n. So in that case, I don't have to go to the for loop. So I will be returning from there. But before returning, I have to make sure that I'm adding the current value to my res. So how will I do that? I will do res dot. I guess this much uh, you all must be like used to now because it's like same code only that we are writing. It is just like small variation, right? Now let's call this from our function. So what am I going to do? I'm going to first make a vector that I will be returning. I'm going to call it res. I'm going to call the helper function. What will be the uh, current string that I will pass? It will be empty string. The index initially will be zero. 
I will pass the n value. I will pass the uh, array that is given to us and the res, right? And I will return res from here. The helper function takes care of the rest. Let's compile and see. Works. Let's submit and see. Awesome. We have passed all the test cases. If you have any doubts, if you think you're getting stuck anywhere, just let me know in the comments. I'm here to help you out. We are solving so many questions and they are all so similar. You should be able to write the code now, right? So I'm here to help you out. You just have to put in the effort and practice now. See you tomorrow.